Hi everyone, Bria Nicole here from Etched Actuarial, and if you're having trouble with deductibles and understanding them when you're studying for exam P, well, this is the video for you because I'm going to be explaining in detail how deductibles work, and at the end I'll go through an example from the SOA sample problems and show you how you can apply what I've shown you here to questions that are actually asked on the exam. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so this is Amy. Amy owns this house. And she has just signed an insurance contract on her house. And let's say that that insurance contract has a deductible of $1,000. So this is going to be really important going forward. Remember that Amy's insurance, pro or insurance contract has a deductible of $1,000. So let's say one day a tornado comes along right past Amy's house and unfortunately there's damages that are done to the house. We can look at the damages at using a graph like this one. Um, you'll see that I've marked down the thousand dollar deductible and the damage can either be below a thousand dollars or above it. So like I kind of just said, there are two possibilities. So damage to the house can be less than $1,000. And that would look like this. So in the graph on the left-hand side, you'll see a, a red area, and that's the damage. And in this example, the damage is less than the deductible. So maybe a rock or something flew from a tornado and hit the window on the door, and now the door or the window is broken so obviously this won't cost very much to fix it will be less than a thousand dollars so in this situation Amy would actually have to pay the full amount of the damage herself the insurance company wouldn't pay anything because the amount of damage was less than a thousand dollar deductible so Amy has to pay the total damage in this situation now the other situation could be that damage was more than a thousand dollars. So maybe the the tornado went right past the house, ruined the house, knocked down tons of trees, and now there's been a huge loss to Amy. In this situation, the damage is much more than a thousand dollars. And as you can see on in the graph, the damage is way higher than the thousand dollar deductible. So in this situation, Amy is actually going to pay the first thousand dollars of her ins of the first thousand dollars, and then the insurance company is going to pay the rest. So hopefully this shows it a little clearer. Amy is going to pay a thousand dollars, everything up until that point. And then the insurance company is going to pay the rest. So what the insurance company is actually paying is equal to the total damage or the total loss minus the deductible. And I hope that, that this image makes that clear. This is going to be really important. So as you can see here, the full amount is eventually paid. Amy pays the up to the deductible, the first thousand dollars, and then everything above that is paid by the insurance company. So in total, all the, the payments made will allow Amy's house to be completely back to its original condition. They'll pay for everything. So this is really important to watch out for because as I just showed you, the total damage minus, minus the deductible, that's what the insurance company's payment is going to be. So there's a difference between the insurance company's payment and the total loss. The total loss in company encompasses everything, all the damage, including the deductible. But the insurance company's payment is only the total loss minus the deductible. The insurance company doesn't have to pay that deductible. 
So it's really important to always distinguish between the insurance company's payment and the loss. And when you're looking at questions on exam P, you have to make sure that you're paying attention to the wording so that you know whether they're talking about the insurance company's payment or whether, whether they're talking about the loss. So as you can see, the total payment is equal to the total loss minus the deductible. And I'm just going to leave this screen here for a second so that you can have a chance to see how this all works. So if you need a little more time, you can pause the video here. But I'm going to move on to a practice question from the SOA sample problems. And this is actually question number 40. So in this question, you'll see an insurance company pays for a random loss of X. So right at the beginning, they're using the wording loss. So pay attention to that. Subject to a deductible of C. Now the loss is modeled using the density function that they've given here, F at X. So that's the loss. That's the total amount of damage done to the house, for example. Now, in the next part of this question, they say, given a random loss of X, the probability that the insurance payment is less than 0.5 is equal to 0.64. So this is where you really have to pay special attention to the wording because they start with talking about the loss, but then they give you some information about the insurance payment. So in this question, they want you to calculate C. So using this, we can kind of go through this. I've, I've changed the $1,000 deductible to C, as you can see in the graph on the left-hand side. So the best thing to start with when you get a question like this is to define a new variable. And that new variable, in this one we'll call it Y, will be the insurance payment. And we already know that the insurance payment is equal to the total loss minus the deductible. So just like in the solutions to this question, you'll see that Y, which is the insurance payment, will be zero if the loss is between zero and C. And that's because the insurance doesn't have to pay anything if the loss is less than C, because the policyholder, or Amy in our example, would pay the whole amount. So the insurance company doesn't have to pay anything. The insurance company only has to pay once the loss goes above the deductible. And like I showed you, the amount that the insurance company will pay is equal to the loss, which is X, minus the deductible, which is C in this example. So the question also gives us this. It uses the information from the question. It says that 0.64 is equal to the probability that Y, which is the insurance payment, is less than 0.5. So hopefully you can set up that equation just given the information that is in the question. But then you have to somehow change this Y into something that uses C so that you can solve the question. And I've done that here. In my equation, I show that the probability of Y being less than 0.5 is equal to the probability that X minus C is less than 0.5, which is equal to the probability that X is less than 0.5 plus C. And if we continue on, you can do the integration. That's not the point of this question, but you see that they actually integrate the distribution of x over all 0 to 0.5 plus c. So I really hope that helps. And I just want to squeeze this in here. I can help you pass exam P if you're writing soon. I have a study strategy program where I work with people writing exam P, I help keep them accountable, I create an entire study strategy for you, I answer all your questions along the way, and 
I'd absolutely love to work with you, so check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below. See you later.